Hi, this is Linda Amon, Amon Arts. Welcome to my world. This is our Art Talk 2, and it's creating new inspiration for 2024. Welcome, everybody. We're going to share the screen. I'll take you over to what we're going to talk about. Okay, so this is our second art talk. My plan is that we will have, uh, this is in a three part of creating new inspiration for this year, learning to fuel your creativity. Most of us have had times that we have the I got nothings disease. And I've, I've had that a few times, I just haven't got anything. So this is gonna give you some um, ideas of how you can take that I haven't got anything in my mind right now to do and it will start giving you some, some good ideas. So um, that's our plan. Topic is um, one that I've done a lot with my master artists that I have online, and it's been very successful for them. In fact, in class yesterday, they mentioned that it was good to have a review on these things. They've been putting these things into practice that we're gonna talk about, but now they have a good reminder of that. So uh, one of the things I get asked all the time as an artist is, Linda, do you paint every day? And my answer is always, I work every day on art or I do art every day. Um, I don't paint every day. I'm doing other things. Sometimes I'm teaching. Sometimes I am doing research. Sometimes I am um, just looking at other ideas. I mean, there's other things I do besides just that, so is the list. And if you want to take a picture with your um, phone, you're welcome to. I did change one thing uh, from, and it's in the purple. So these are the 10 items that I'm going to be talking about. Um, listing of what you love, the research, repurposing, reinventing old or failed paintings. Those are the three that we talked about last time. We touched a little bit about working in a series and continuing education. And then we have um, play, play, explore, setting studio hours, waste supplies. That really freaked some people out. <laughs> so what I did is I put paint prolifically, strategically, use good paper and supplies. So basically I want you to, and we're gonna have a whole session on that um, next time that we talk about how you can use good supplies and still make affordable, for your budget and how I don't waste things. So this, the way I wrote it before was um, hard for, a little different, we changed it. And then talking about new co composition styles, directions that you want to do, and then how important gratitude and thankfulness is actually in being an artist. I found it's huge um, importance. So those are the ones that we're looking at for our talk. So, this was what we talked about last time, all the lists of things that you would make a notebook of the things that you love because people that know me know that I like circles, line, color, direction. There are certain things that you would go, that could be Linda's work because of these items. And then this is these we've already talked about, we're just gonna look at them quickly, but these are some of the different ways that I'd like you to think about researching. Um, go back and study other art, what you love about famous art, museum art shows, fine art shows, there's a difference here and you know that, galleries, follow current artists, follow artists you love, never copy their work but be inspired by them. I interview people of all occupations about what creativity is and how they do their work and that has given me huge insight into creativity um, um, practices. They're not necessarily artists. Quite often it's on an airplane because you've got them stuck talking to you. Um, study your own work. I have very particular ways that I go through my work so I can know what works, what doesn't, and what I want to repeat and what I'd rather not repeat. So you can really discover what you love. So we did a little bit about that. Repurposing and reinventing failed paintings. What you know today is more than you knew the other day, yesterday's. And so it gives you a lot of opportunity to come up with ideas that are fresh to, for those old paintings. And it's already given you a start. It's not a white piece of paper or a white surface for whatever kind of art you do. Okay, so we went over that last time. These are a couple I showed, this is what it became. 
This one I had for a very long time. I found out it didn't, it never sold. And then I did the changes to this and it sold within a week, which was either a very lucky thing or the changes made a difference. One of those two. And then this one, this was a painting that just looked scary and I just didn't like it. So what I did is I took and cut it up and I got four art pieces from it. These are two of them. And after I put them on a cradle board, it's a watercolor, then I embellish them and they don't even really look like they came from this to me. I mean, I know they did, but those um, came from this painting. So sometimes I will repurpose painting and make a number of them. This is something I did a long time ago and I always knew it was kind of a good looking pencil, but I was very, um, new into painting and that, you know, it just wasn't anything wonderful, but I, I thought I'd try something different. I love what it became. It just, uh, it just, you know, embellishing it with um, a stencil, the darks to lights in different places. Um, now I really, I like it. Okay, so that is repurposing. And we talked a little bit about working in a series last time. And so um, this is just a quick review again. So in a series, it can be a color harmony of paintings that are more than one, a storyline, connective lines. Basically a series would be something that there's a connection with the others in the set. It could be, um, I'll show you a couple examples, but it could be that it's on your vacation to Italy and they're connected because it's all the vacation. They have different looks and everything, but they are connected by something. A series is something that famous artists have always done. And it's like, maybe we should consider that as a um, possibility that would help our work. I know that for sales, if you do a series, quite often it changes the amount that you sell because people can, they love the one, they want the other one too. And I've even had them purchase, I had this little um, uh, flower shop scene from Australia and I did it in a watercolor and then I did it in a, in a very detailed and then I did the same painting in a watercolor pen loose look and they came to another show and I knew they already owned the other one she said oh I've just got to have that I said do you realize that you already have that painting it's just a little different she goes no I don't and I said actually and I mentioned it to her and she said well that's kind of cool I gotta have this one too so it can even be the same one reinvented. So a series is, if you've got a good idea, you know, keep it going or work with it. Okay, many of the masters, we talked about Monet is certainly one of them. Here's a series of just a couple of aqua boards with watercolor only. Um, these are small, but these sell really well because they can, they can just be on a little easel or something. This next one, um, the camels were from Israel, photos that are in close of the paintings. If you went on my website, you would see the entire paintings. These are all from the Amon family farm in Mount Angel, Oregon, the junk piles of things around. And so this is a series, even though they're different from each other in, in the looks of them and maybe some of the style, I would still count it a series because they're connected by theme. This is a series that would be a Aggressive series. So the top one is are some tulips that are pretty, um, pretty realistic. And then you've got the one at the very bottom that took them and ran them in a row and had them be a little bit more abstracted. And then the top one right over here was taking this and making it farther in abstraction. So to me, this is a series that morphed, you could say. And I don't know if I have any of them left. I think I've sold them. The interesting thing to me is this block here. I have to tell you where that was inspired from. I was working on this from this idea, going to this idea and then eventually to this. And these should all, I don't think this one's on my website, but I think these are. This one, I, I was holding over my iPad over the painting to look and see you know, would it look like and take a picture of it? This is the shadow size of my iPad. 
And I saw the shadow on there. I went, whoa, I really like the square in there. So I did an observation right then that was kind of unusual that I decided that the shadow of my iPad made the shape that I wanted to include. And I think it really, for me, I think it really made it a different unique. So this would be a series that you take from, um, you could go the other way. You could go very abstract and come more realistic. But these are good for me because they really, they really stretch my imagination. Okay, so now we're coming to our new section. The continuing education, I think it's really important to analyze your own painting, self-study, that you um, put them through something like you're judging for a show, that you take and look at your painting kind of from an outside look and study it. And you can go, you know, that. And if you think in a painting, you go, you know, I don't really like that, but maybe nobody will notice. I'll give you a little thought. If there's something really bugging you in a painting, they're going to notice. And if they don't, you're going to notice and you don't want to put it out there with it bugging you and you don't like it. So always take the self-study before something goes out. To me, that's really important. I think it's important to be a dedicated student. I, I think that if you take long breaks between your, your skill, I think it's like a golfer. I doubt that the professionals decide to take a year off and just come back into the, the competition. I think we stay better by continuing. Um, we all have knowledge that we, you, you know, we can get knowledge from a lot of places. There's no lack of wonderful, fabulous instructors. Uh, find someone that really cares about what you're doing and help them, have them um, give you feedback. Uh, I do a lot of online consults because it, you can't always see what's in your own work. You'll be amazed at your inspiration, your growth, when you take and study your work, study other people's work and integrate those together and ask really hard questions of yourself and find um, a friend um, or some, you know, someone that is in the art field or not. My husband can really nail me on some of the um, paintings. I've trained him well. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's really good to have someone that can be honest with you and you say, you know, I just saw an unintended look in there and you've got a frog in the picture. And then you can decide if you wanna keep the shadow of that frog in there or not. Um, I end up with birds in my painting all the time and I watch for them because of these shapes I do. Sometimes they get to say, sometimes they leave. But if you study your own work and really assess it diligently, you'll continue to go the next place things I offer. If you want to take a picture of that, you're welcome to. But basically, I have a lot of different things that I had somebody say, could you just give me a little thought of the things you do? So uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, in, in person at different places, we have master online classes. That's something I have, we assess together if you can uh, come into those. Those are um, skilled artists. Um, I have a subscription online that has 80 lessons in it. Uh, do a lot of consults online, um, workshops through the year. I have a website. And then these have just added these free Zoom talks. I plan to finish out the series of these three in January. And then I'm planning that the first Wednesday of each month, there will be a new topic. So if this is, if, as long as there is interest, I'm planning to do that. Okay, so the next thing I want you to think about is playing and exploring. And I really used to think this was a waste of time. I just wanted to get to my photograph and then do my painting and why would I play? And I heard it all my career and I thought, I don't have time to play. <laughs> and now I find I can't, I can't leave play out of the picture because play is what is giving me more success. And it's actually speeding up what I do rather than slowing it down because I'm able to get ideas or um, stay away from my, oh my goodnesses that I might have done had I not played a little before. And it's often when I play and just put, put paint or ink or something down to a surface, to a substrate that I can get back into it. Some artists paint every day. I would love, and there's a number of you that paint every day and I applaud you. I wish that were me. But what I do is I 
really hit it hard and paint and paint. I'll come out with a whole series or a whole lot of paintings. I'm usually working on three to five paintings at a time. So I will leave something for ponder time. So I don't um, rush through it and not make good decisions. And then I get rid, I don't have anything left. All my creativity has all been used up and then I have to build up my interest again. And that's why I'm sharing this art talk to you because this is how, the, what I'm teaching and giving you in this series is what I had to have for myself to get myself back and going when I had the, I haven't got anything in my brain left. And I don't know how many of you have that. Maybe, let me just stop here. And does anybody ever have the time? I got no brain cells left for painting. Anybody? Or is it just me? Kind of a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Just checking. There's a few of them. Some of you just won't tell me that. Oh. <laughs> okay. So this is the time that um, sometimes I just get out something and make marks. And so uh, this happens to be ink this time. It could be any kind of um, medium I want to do. But I just do a lot of these. I have stacks and stacks of things like this. And then I can use those torn apart for collage, or I can just use them for ideas. But I have um, what would look to some people in the world like, you know, a big bucket of trash, but it is treasure. So those play times help me a lot. This is one that I did. It's, it's a watercolor. And then I did encaustic. So I put wax over top. So it's been melted wax over top and torched. And now it's um, on a, um, a cradled wood board. And it's got the watercolor with all the words on it. And it's got the, the surface is wax. But what I love about this is it was just playing. I was just playing on a piece of paper and I was watercoloring and doing all this stuff. And I went, I just love this. And this is called a semic writing. A semic means that it looks like words and you think they're words, but they're artistic scribble. <laughs> and I love a semic writing. And when you use a fancy word like that, it sounds like, you know, it's big stuff. And to me, it kind of is. So I have this as an art piece that I just love. And it was it was play that turned into a piece I really um, am happy with. She's doing that. Someone tell us what you do in the master class. OK, Kathy, go. That are in the class, Arlene, uh, Carol Levy, Carol McCarty, and myself that I can see. And uh, we paint. And uh, we spend time. Um, not only focused on painting and critiquing each other's work and learning from each other, but also um, go more in depth with the items that um, Linda is um, um, going over in, in this talk as well, so. So you, but it's a Zoom class, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. And and so how do you show your painting if your computer's in one room and you paint in another room? Oh, we've got it all down. You send me the image ahead of time. And I mark all over it online. It's it's pretty cool. All right. So this right here is a, a tulip painting that was the start of a demo that I just didn't have anything to do with it. And this is in that play explore time. I, and so I have all these pieces of plexiglass cut that I can see through the painting and I can lay it down and see if I like the shape and still see what it would do on there. So I have circles and squares and rectangles and all kinds of things. And so I laid that down. And then you can see here, it's a little bit like a scenic writing, but it's a design. And that was done on a tissue paper, like you saw a, a little while back on this right here. Um, see, I can go back and forth like strategic now. So like this stuff. So I took one of those pieces and put it in on top of my watercolor. And then I did all the rest of the watercolor and I came up with this wild geometric floral experiment. So that's one of the ways that I play is I will take something that is in progress or something that, that's a demo. And then um, I think I even did some of this as a demo in a class. And I mentioned this one. I just, there's something about it. I just really like it. And you don't have to, that's okay. So the next thing I want you to know about is studio hours. And you'll say, well, I have a busy life. And I'd say, yes, you do. And so do I, and all of us do. 
But if you do not set a time to paint, it's gone. It just, the day happens, you, you go to bed that night and go, I didn't paint again today. And you, we heard, you heard about, I'm not an everyday painter, but I'm an everyday art person. So I'm always looking at ideas. I'm always finding things I wanna do. Um, I usually set a, a day of the week that is off limits for at least um, five hours that is my studio time. And um, I rent a studio over in Idaho Falls and here in um, Star, it's in our home. And I don't have a computer with me. I stay um, off the phone unless I'm calling somebody to show them something real quick and say, you know, how's this looking or something for some input. But I really dedicate uh, time to my, to my painting. And I probably, um, go about 80 to 75 to 80 paintings a year. They're all sizes, but, um, and some of them would be in the pile that would be re-looked at or reinvented. But I, I do a lot of painting. And I think, it, I think if you don't put some time to it, you will not, um, and this is even if you just love it and you're not being a professional or anything, you just wanna keep your skills up would be my thought. And you wanna continue. Um, they are what I have down here. The personal time is a mini vacation. Um, you cannot think of everything at the same time. Your brain cannot think of what you need to do um, for me on book work for the business. It can't do that and do the next brush stroke. Your brain will give your, um, your creativity gives you a vacation. And it's a small vacation or a long one, depending, but I think it makes all the difference in our health. I think it gives some pro productivity. Productivity. I think it does a lot of things. It just keeps us, um, I think it keeps us younger. This is something I th thought I'd show you real quick. And this one here is um, a little fuzzy because I took a, a, just a snapshot of it. You can, if you want to take a, um, I have a free poster for your studio that you can download and you can make it any size. It's a huge resolution size. You just go on my website under the menu of um, workshop descriptions, scroll down and where it says handouts, and then you'll see this and it says, this is a working studio. I work very hard to create this mess. So I made that sign for myself. I made the little saying so that when you are working, people understand its purpose. Your mess is a purposed decision um, and you've got good excuse for it. So there you go. So you're welcome to download that um, off my um, website and do that. Okay, so um, this presentation is going to be um, on my, um, this one and the next one is January 24th. They're always gonna be on a Wednesday as best I can. And it, this is about the Amen Arts Academy that it will be in. Um, you can look on my website, it's on the home page. You can subscribe to it and um, it takes, it's $20 a month, which I get a portion of. And there's about 80 or 90 uh, video lessons in there and such. And I am back, some of those of you who have been in it and went out, I'm adding a lot of new um, information in there. And the new information's more this, um, a higher level than what you've had in the, the first series of it. So it's gonna be more of my art processes. It's gonna be more of the way I think that as an artist, it's gonna have ideas. Um, I'm interviewing people, um, articles in there. It's gonna have a mix of a lot more than it has in the past. So there, there's your commercial. Over last, um, last class, list of what you love. If you don't know what you love, how can you produce it? I think you can get lucky. I think that if you get lucky all the time, that skill. <laughs> if you get lucky once in a while, it's wonderful. But if you keep getting better and better, it becomes a natural skill that you're bringing up rather than just once in a while having it happen. We talked a little bit about research, the things you can do. You saw a few things of reinventing, um, working in a series, um, which can be combined with this, as you saw. We talked a little bit about continuing education different ways. We talked about these tonight. The next time we talk, I want to talk about how I am strategic in the way I use my supplies 
so that I can use best practices and best products to have the best outcome. And then we're going to talk about how you can change and look at composition styles and directions and how you would go about um, updating maybe your skills with a different design. And then also about how I feel that um, thankfulness. A few minutes about what we talked about last time, if you want to, or tonight, if there's something that resonates with you that you go, you know, that's something I hadn't thought of for a while or something new to me that would inspire you to be in a more creative spot for yourself this year. So um, you can kind of raise your hand and we'll know who's talking so that we can kind of keep somewhat order. And then at the very end of class, I will show you how I can pull up a, a painting, draw all over it. Like Susan, you wondered how the master class or my consults would go. Because some people just buy a half hour consult on what they want. And I can pull up their painting. I say, you should do this, this, and this. Think about this. And then um, you can do those things and we can um, go on from that. So it's, it's very interactive. Um, it works amazingly well. So in fact, there's some of my master's students and uh, some of my students online that said, because you don't have to pack everything up and bring it everything and you can do it in any weather from anywhere, they prefer it. So <laughs> they don't want to see the person off. <laughs> okay, someone give me a thought of what resonated with you, gave you some new inspiration, some thoughts. The uh, play and explore thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's so important. I. Um, I don't do that enough. I just kind of dive in and want everything to be perfect and kind of mm -hmm. go for that. But I, I think I need to do more of this. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I love looking at your examples of your, your circles and your pens and your, I mean, that really attracts me to that um, exercise. And I, I'd like to try it more. Good. And Carol, I think what you're going to find is even if you're a realistic artist or you're abstract, whatever you do, if you do encaustic, if you do oil, whatever you do, these art talks for all art, um, you will find that you can do that in the place still. I really believe it, it actually gives you more time for the going to your painting because you have exercised your brain to be better with decisions. So I think you'll find it good. Okay, someone else. See, I can't quit talking and teaching at the same time. Malin. Hi, um, I moved to a new place this year and I've been taking like playful pictures of so many things. <laughs> and I took a picture of three mason jars, but the light, the sunlight came in and made it this beautiful, perfect shadow of one jar next to it. And so when you were saying about doing the the playfulness i thought that's what i'm going to do yeah. is bring up some of those pictures i've been taking and so i can paint I, i've been trying to paint and that's good melinda i'll give you a little thought in that i have finally after years many 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 years i'm actually to the place i am more concerned more interested more excited with the education I'm gonna get from the piece I'm working on than the outcome. How many of you can say you've gotten to that place? Oh, There's I think so. Oh, man. Yeah. It's a hard place to get to for me because I wanted it always to work. And now when I have an oh my goodness, everybody knows what an oh my goodness is? Yeah. <laughs> and when I've had a failed painting, I go, yes, now I have all freedom. Because now I don't care about this thing. I can learn a lot. And I've had those go on to, to sell and be prize winning paintings. So I think you'll find that um, a good exercise to, to do. Go for the education. Not that I yeah. expected that, but okay. Someone else. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, uh, at the end of the meeting last, last week, or was it two weeks ago, uh, someone had made the statement that they didn't do research. They just painted. Mm -hmm. I related to that very well. I rarely research anything. I see what I like. Mm -hmm. I paint it. I just paint. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I need to do more research and 
<clears throat> look at a lot more things that um, might perk my interest in a different way or tell me what I love. I don't always know what it is I love. I just do it. Right. Um, the other thing is, is last year I had determined that I would set a certain day for painting and towards the end of the year, life just kept getting in the way. Yeah, it does. And I've gone back to doing that. I mean, I have gone back to my day that I set aside to do it, and it's made a big difference. It's really, it really is something that isn't only our art, it is really a place for um, the creativity, um, even on a frustrating day. Um, I think I told the last class, I had a painting that I, I will keep doing that painting and keep working at it until it has no breath left. <laughs> until I've done everything, every education out of it. And a couple months ago or whatever, I left the studio and I went, it's dead, let it go. And the next day I came into the studio and I went, I think I hear it breathing. <laughs> it's, it's actually the one I showed you, the two little squares that came out of that ugly circle thing. And I made the two abstracts from the black and the moon, the whole thing. That was the one that was um, not breathing. Next day I heard a little breath. So <laughs> Never give up, never give up. Okay, um, Beth, I think you were going to mention something. You moved on the screen here. Uh, yes. Okay, there um, you are. Two, two things uh, that are kind of related, like we were talking about explore, and then you made a mention of, you know, never copy another artist's work. I actually, and I think you maybe you're talking about don't copy someone's work and then try and sell it or whatever. I suppose you can hang it on your wall or something. But I, for instance, I love like, I do a lot of exploration. I look at a lot of artists online and I, I just love to do that. But I love John Singer Sargent. So I have copied his work because mm -hmm. I've been trying to, you know, you, I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, how do how did he get that? Yes. How did he get that brush stroke to look like that? Right. You know, so I experiment trying to say, gee, I like the way that looks. How do you get the paint on the paper like that? So I've done kind of quite a lot of that. So I was just kind of curious if you, you know, understand mm -hmm. what my, Reflection is on this, I guess. Yes, and I would agree with that. We need to learn from the masters. We need um, to pick up what took people so many um, years of their life to do. Um, I just know that when I've judged some shows, I would go, I know where that's from. Oh, okay. Some this... will, and some people will say, oh, it can be changed 20% or whatever. Here's mm -hmm. the actual law. If it is recognizable to the source, yeah. It's an infringement. So yeah. I tell people, um, and if you give it away, it's still an infringement because someone got a gain from it. So it's not like you can give the painting away and it's not sold, you're fine. I am very thoughtful to, like you, do some of the master's tricks and things. But when I put it out there, I want to be sure it's a Linda Amon and you want it to be a Beth. And yeah. so I would, yeah. I would say you're absolutely right in your study to do that. Okay, someone else. Good. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate yeah. that. There's so many directions to go. <laughs> what I do with that, that Linda, yes. um, I look at a lot of artists, but I will look at it and I'll say, what is it about that that attracted me to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it the shapes they use or is it the contrast or the, the colors instead of that you like about the work that you're being attracted to? I agree. Rather than copy. Yeah, in fact, Susan is one that a number of you have heard me talk about. Susan Greenbaum, I, I just have <laughs> trouble breathing when I look at her work. And oh. I, I, will do, no. I will look at oh, Susan as, as well as a number of others of you, but it, she does the encaustic and I just, you know, it's amazing. So the, the thing that I do with Susan's that I would do with Peggy's or Arlene's or Carol's, any of those that I love their work, I would, I would agree with you. You'd go... Is it the color I'm attracted to? Is it because it's got a cruciform composition with a horizon line through it? Is it because of the ascetic writing? What is it that drew me to that? And that's the same as Beth was, you know, how did they do that, but still make it your own? And Susan, yours is always your own. And everyone here, I know, I know you, and you're making these paintings that are you using those, I call them detective, you know, being a detective and finding out 
what things um, you can use in your work. So thank you. Very well put, Susan. Someone else. I'm sure you're saying wonderful things. But I. Who's talking? I can't see. <laughs> oh, is it Susan? You keep freezing up. I know. Oh, I don't know if it's coming from me. It's your connection. It Pain happens. Great. My computer is terrible. No. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm plugging me in. Okay. All right. Someone else. That was good input, Susan. Thank you. I'll pick on somebody. I know you guys. I can pick on you. <laughs> I especially like seeing what you did with the tulips where you had the realistic ones and then the somewhat abstract and then the really abstract. Mm -hmm. it, it'd be sort of a way to get into doing something abstract where I don't feel comfortable with abstract, I think. Right. And a lot of you know I, I'm having some interest of my work that is abstract. I got in the Western Federation Society with an abstract and I... I have done it through a lot of the methods I'm talking about. And Susan, that is one of the things I did is I went, okay, I love these tulips. How can I push them? And then I like them this way. And then something as simple as seeing the shadow over top of the pace and going, hey, that square looks fabulous. <laughs> you know, um, so Susan, I think um, it does help for us to kind of tweak things. <coughs> I think we, we, we think our time is so precious, we don't have the ability to do that. But I think when you have your studio time, you should be more interested. I, this is very pushy at you, more interested in the education because the education goes with you to the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay, so else. I saw a real change in my work when I started painting every day. Yeah, you do. She does it every day. Calling to. Yeah, that's good. Deanna, give me a thought on your thoughts. Your, uh, your... Well, I like the idea of setting up a time to paint and thinking of it as a mini vacation. Mm -hmm. And the thought that you don't have the computer on and you don't have other things distracting you. And I think, well, I thought about it as a mini vacation. So maybe that will inspire me to try to do it more. And you know, on those days of the studio, I usually have a meal ready when I get home. So I don't have to think about stopping early or anything. And I can go home and Rick and I have a meal ready to go. Um, of course, there are times I will say to Rick, um, I'm really in that zone, Rick. I'm really in that zone. And he'll say, well, they'll make dinner. So I really need to do the zone more often. Pull that one. <laughs> <laughs> he'll say, so you're really on it? I go, I really am. So I just can't stop and make dinner. He goes, okay, we'll take care of this. <laughs> He's not in the room here. <laughs> Jerry, give me a thought of what um, maybe resonated with you tonight. Well, I, I like the idea of play because uh, as some of you know, I did uh, almost exclusively uh, landscapes for a long, long time. Right. And I got bored and I got tired and I just, I didn't felt like I wanted to, to paint sometimes. So actually I sort of went to using a sketchbook and different right. things. I would do ink or I would do um, water soluble, uh, pencil or just different things and I've tried to do uh, things around my house or flowers or something like that just to get me away from what I was doing mm -hmm. and again I, I really tried a lot to think about play because if I have a pic piece of watercolor in front of me I have to make a picture I have to do a painting and it has to be something I can hang on the wall, you know, and that's silly, but it's freed me up and I'm sort of uh, trying some other things now, just not, not drastic, but I'm just feeling a lot better about it. Good. So something I did over Christmas, um, because the play has really been over the last couple of years, I've allowed myself to do that. Sometimes the ascetic writing, 
I will do this really painting that I'm really excited about. I'll go take the bravery and just scribble all over it. And I'll go, oh, that was fun. <laughs> so oh Christmas, I had, uh, we had our family over here and I took um, Miller and Elodie, a two and a four year old, and I gave them both an eight by eight um, watercolor paper um, board. And I just gave them markers and pencils and I said, you know, scribble all over it. And then I switched them. I said, you guys do each other. And I have this, you know, scribble on these, these two paintings. And I'm going to do a video of what I'm going to use those as my start. Good. Well, could you spell that word for you, for me? I'm, I'd like to look at, I'd like to look more about that. Yeah. Let me write it. A-S-E-M-I-C. -E -E yeah. A-S-E-M-I-C. And um, I'll tell you, when you say a semic, it, it put another hundred dollars to your painting, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I think that's a, I think that's something I want to play with. I, yeah. You know, now that you said that, it I have full paintings of a semic, and the semic will get you more money than artistic scribble. <laughs> okay. it does. Yeah. And, and another one of our talks is going to be the words you use. It'll be out in February or some other time, but it's going to be the words you use to inspire yourself, how you talk about your art. That's one of the big master class things we do is how to talk about your art, how to present yourself when somebody uh, says something. Um, you know, what do you do? You know, there's a lot of things and words, words make a difference. Okay, so we're coming up on just a couple minutes left. Um, let me do this. Let me get something up real quick. Someone else, um, give us a call. <laughs> or I'll call on you. <laughs> it could happen. This I can't. I have a. I have a question here. Uh, when you went over the things <coughs> that you have for the plans for this, and I wasn't able to be with you last week and the first thing you said was a list of what you love is that something we did or what was that all about if that you don't mind going actually, that. yeah so i'll go over it really quick basically i have a list of my master class students have a list that um talk about what they write down what they love or what somebody says about what they love about their painting and that will give them more insight onto um, how to do their work. So if you were to describe some of my work, you'd say, Linda loves texture. Linda loves circles and lines. She okay. likes connectivity. She likes um, very um, distinct pathways. She likes mystery without confusion. I mean, it's a long list. So then if you, Jerry, said, Linda, I really love how you melded those colors and I agree with you, I would put, I like melded colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that helps um, the list. Um, some, those of you that are in my master class, raise your hand if those words that you've been writing down have helped you with your work to say um, the, um, to use the words of what you love and, and use those within your, so they've been doing it for quite some time and it makes a difference. So, mm -hmm. uh, let me pull you over to the share screen for just a moment. The class. Pardon? Can I just say one quick thing about the master class? Oh, sure. Kathy said, so I've been in it from the beginning, which started, I believe, in 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much the same people um, through all that time, which in itself is a wonderful thing. But uh, you would just be amazed at the progress that everybody in that class has made in their painting skills and their confidence from taking that from this master class. It's just incredible. It, they're that. dedicated artists. They're dedicated artists that are willing to um, learn and change what they're doing. So you should see, uh, thank you very much, Carol. And we do have a uh, prerequisites, prerequisites that we have at least two carols in every class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is in the subscription. It's one of the, the best. It's really funny. When Rick and I were walking um, a couple of years ago, I said, oh, Rick, stop. Look at that crack in the cement of the, of the sidewalk. And he goes, 
oh yeah, that looks really cool. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to have that be one of the lessons. And he he um, thought that was pretty funny. And it is one of the most popular lessons in the subscription. So the other day I was walking with my groceries and look what I found. I found another really fabulous crack in the sidewalk. This was in the driveway or the parking lot. But look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, aren't you all just real realistic or not? Look at that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. This is the kind of thing I can do as I can say, all right, I think that right here, you need to have a little more granulation in this area, right in here. I think this could be thinner through here. I think you could have, you know, that's the kind of in there. Here's your photo. I'm glad you went away from that. You did an extra piece over here. That's good. You've got a very good composition here. Those are the ways that we can um, pull up your artwork and um, on, on real time show you uh, how to crop it, how to, uh, we all have input and then I have a particular um, time that I take. Okay, so we're up right about two minutes. Who's got a two minute something they wanna say? <laughs> Did you enjoy this? Yes. Yes. You say yeah. that I can see you. But if I couldn't see you, the way you prove that is you come back to the next one and the next one, will be about talking about how you use your supplies because I am, I do a lot of painting. I do a lot of teaching. A lot of you know that when you come to my classes, you get to use my stuff. And so I think of all the ways that I teach people to be thoughtful with materials. That's one of the things we're gonna talk about. I'm also gonna talk about how, um, what's one of the other things on the list I gave it to you? Um, Composition. Composition. Some of the different ways that I've taken, I have the, the composition of the cruciform that I keep going back. I've been on it for three years and I put other ones in between and I overlay compositions. And the, the uh, cruciform has really taken me some places because I changed the one third, two third golden mean or some of those things. So we're going to talk about some of those things that you can do. And then I will show you examples of how I feel that you can uh, be in gratitude and thankfulness with your art for who you um, give that to, um, how you um, can encourage other people. Those three topics will go over quickly on the same thing. We'll keep them right at an hour, half hour of my talking, half hour input. Okay. All right. And uh, any questions? Any answers? <laughs> okay, so this is what I would have you do if you enjoyed this and you have a special something that you would to encourage me with an email. I would love that um, because all of us can use encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the 24th, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you.